All right. Well, now that we have hit 12 p.m. Eastern time, we will go ahead and kick off. Thank you to anyone who's joining us today for our first uh, installment of Otero Live. Today, we're going to be discussing what is zero trust content security, content disarm, and reconstruction in action. Um, our speaker today is going to be Henry Frith, Votero's VP of Customer Success and Sales Engineering. So he'll be sharing a presentation with everyone today. We hope you enjoy. Feel free to drop any comments in the chat. Henry, go ahead and kick us off. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is our first time using this platform to share on LinkedIn. So uh, if we have any hiccups along the way, I'll apologize up front. Uh, I think we're uh, I think we're all in and can everyone can someone give me a thumbs up so you can see my presentation? Yep. Okay, sounds great. Again, um, I'm Henry Frith. Uh, I've uh, been with Votero for a little over a year. Uh, when I when I joined Votero and started uh, and started doing research on um, on uh, zero day uh, th uh, threats and how a product like content disarm and reconstruct could help, I really didn't know much about it myself. I, I was, um, uh, you know, had, had heard some of the earlier versions and started to dig deeper into the technology. So we'll, we'll do it. We'll kind of dive in. Uh, we'll leave this open. Um, if you have questions, you can add those to the chat window. Uh, Lexi or myself will be happy, uh, happy to answer those. Uh, so to start with, what is a zero day attack? What, what is Votero protecting against? Uh, we're, we're protecting against zero uh, day threats or, or unknown, unrealized threats. So what do, what do I mean by that? Um, there are you know, true zero days attacks that it's the first day that someone has found out that there is a vulnerability in a piece of, um, in, you know, a piece of code. Uh, and even, you know, the threat actors may or may not have found out and started to, uh, you know, to leverage that vulnerability to create attacks to go against it. Uh, and, and then unrealized unknown threats or, or maybe just, um, you know, threats that aren't true zero days. They've been around for a while, but maybe your, you know, organizations haven't patched those for some reason. So both both of those kind of uh, vulnerabilities are are the things that the threat actors are are attacking. Uh, I was uh, out at Black Hat last week, and one of the one of the lectures, one of the uh, briefings, rather, was about the attack on the um, Ukrainian power grid after the Russians invaded uh, Ukraine. And it was it was very interesting because the method that was used to attack the vulnerability was a weaponized file. So that's the uh, that's really what we're going to focus on today. Uh, why use files as an attack uh, vector? Uh, because it, because it's easy. Users. Uh, if you think if you take your HR team, what what is their job all day long? They look at uh, P, uh, they look at PDF and Word documents with resume. So their you know their job is to open those files and and to interact with those files and and to forward those files to the hiring manager after they you know after they find a, a candidate that looks good. So. Again, it makes it very easy to uh, send a weaponized file in and have a user open it. Uh, and, and a matter of fact, uh, towards the end of the of, of our discussion today, I'll even show you a weaponized document that did not require anyone to uh, even um, uh, run a macro inside of a document. Just strictly opening that file would uh, would cause the um, uh, the threat to launch. So 
why should I worry about files and, and this zero trust content security that Henry's talking about? I, you know, most organizations have, you know, of course they all have AV. We have sand, you know, sandboxing, reputation filters, EDR, and multiple other layers of defense. So why, why do you need another layer around content, uh, zero trust content security? Uh, the, the, the reason is, is the bad actors, you know, have learned how to get past, the, uh, past a lot of these tools. It's, it's very easy to craft a, a threat that is obfuscated enough that it can get past a sandbox, for instance. Uh, so if you look at sandboxes, they're looking for something that's, um, that's you know, malicious and uh, trying to do something that's out of the ordinary. So again, looking for known bad. If you're looking at AV, they require signatures and those signatures look for known bad uh, things inside of files. Uh, reputation uh, filters are looking for known bad URLs and known bad IP addresses, domains. So we're we're looking for you know known bad all the time, and I've been in security for pretty much my entire career, and and we've been chasing the bad stuff forever, and it, it's tough to do. Uh, the threat actors are going to constantly find a way around a you know a, a, around your security controls if if they if they spend enough time and are uh, persistent enough. So enter another layer of defense and depth, and that's called zero trust content security. And what is zero trust uh, content security? It's also known as content disarm and reconstruction. So content disarm reconstruction is technology uh, that will either flatten a file, uh, remove active content or cl or cleanse the file of any malicious uh, files, and we'll we'll kind of go into that a little deeper. Uh, level one of content disarm or zero trust content security converted. This was probably ten years ago, and to get rid of weaponized files that were coming in. And again, a weaponized file is a, you know, a word, an office, uh, uh, a PDF, any, any file type. Uh, for instance, Votera supports uh, 170 different file types that have, that we see ways that they can be weaponized. So we have a way to stop that. So weaponizing a document of any kind may be embedding a piece of malware inside of that document. It may be embedding a link that downloads or a script that downloads a piece of malicious software from the internet. It may be uh, steganography that hides the malware code inside of an image. So any weapon, any file that can be weaponized, uh, level one zero trust content security, all it did was convert those files to a PDF. So there was no way that the file could be weaponized because there was no active content in it. It was basically a screenshot or a, or a print screen of the uh, document. Um, level um, level two CDR was the ability to, uh, excuse me, and the, the negative part of doing that, of course, of, of level one was that um, users could no longer use the file as, as they planned to. If it was an Excel spreadsheet and it was sent in and converted to a PDF, it, was, it could no longer be weaponized, but it also uh, could no longer be used to uh, do any calculations or anything with. You could print it out. That was about the best you could do. So about five years ago, content uh, security moved, uh, zero trust content security moved from this ability, this converting everything to a PDF to what we uh, referred to as uh, just, or excuse me, what is just stripping out a, anything that could have active content in it. So macros and scripts. 
So the file still kept its format. It was still an Excel file. It was still a Word document, whatever it came in. But the file, if it had macros in it to populate an Excel spreadsheet or to, uh, you know, download a, a, a piece of information that was required uh, for that uh, particular file, that portion would be stripped out. So the file would still be the right format, but it wouldn't necessarily be usable as it was as it was meant to be. And where we are today is what's referred to as level three, uh, zero trust content security or content disarm and reconstruction. And what Votera does is we take this concept of just stripping out macros and instead we want to keep all good macros that we know are good and leave behind any macro that may that is not known good so we switch this whole concept around of looking for known bad and we look for known good and we'll we'll dive into that so a file comes into your uh, organization and and we don't care how it comes in we don't tr you know again zero trust uh, content security we're not trusting any files it doesn't matter if they've been through all of your other security controls already as we talked about earlier you know uh, the threat actors are able to get things past the uh, your your current security controls so by not trusting any file no matter how it comes in, so it comes into your via email, which is, of course, the most common use case, but it also could come into Box, Dropbox, SharePoint, OneDrive, file uploads, uh, file downloads, uh, any, any way that files are coming into your organization, you want to be able to run content disarm and reconstruction. You want to have zero trust for that file, and you want to make sure that you have a clean, safe file for your end user to use. So as the file comes in, the first thing we do is we uh, look at it, do a true type of it, make sure it really is the file type it says it is. And then we break down all of the elements from that file and look for known good. We spin up a template of that file type and move all of the known good, known safe elements over to the new file. And that's macros, OLE objects, uh, uh, images. We'll scrub any images to make sure they don't have any steganography in them. So we reconstruct an entirely new file and we do this without impacting end users performance this this will happen in the you know a quarter of a second or less for an average office document so it's extremely fast uh, it doesn't impact your end users. It requires no signatures, no updates of um, uh, like an AV vendor would re require. It's just rebuilding a new file with known good elements. So if it's an Excel spreadsheet that's trying to has a macro that's trying to populate the Excel spreadsheet with data uh, with numeric data from a database. That's something we'd expect to see. It's known good, and we'd we would uh, add that macro to the reconstructed um, new template, new, the new file. If it's trying to download a VB script or a, um, um, uh, a JavaScript or anything else from the internet that is not something we see all the time, not is not known good, then we leave that behind and we have a clean reconstructed file when this is all done the uh the next thing we do is we do a quick fidelity test and then we deliver this message this new sanitized version to the end user and just to kind of visualize that you have a uh, resume that comes in pdf word doesn't matter open office it comes in and uh, we sanitize, move all the known good, and we leave behind 
whatever is not known good. It can be malware. It could also be just some mis um, malformed uh, portion of the document that shouldn't be there in the first place. It's not part of the standard or the way the documents are normally built, but we end up with a completely usable document with all of the malware left behind. And, you know, and just to give you an example of what a weaponized file looks like, this is a Word document that deep down inside of it, uh, and you can see all the objects that make up a Word document. So when you look at a Word document, you know, you, you think there's text and maybe some font information there, but there's a lot more information. There's, you know, there can be images, there's style sheets uh, that are XML, uh, they're OL, OLE objects, they're, um, again, images. And this, this file deep down inside it has a couple executables that are buried deep inside of it. So this file has uh, information that, you, that we would not expect that, that's not known good and should not be in that file. And when I run that file through virus totals, that, that file I uh, actually created with Metasploit, and it's a reverse shell. And I, um, when I uploaded it and ran it through virus totals, 39 of the AV vendors knew it was bad. Not sure what the other uh, vendors were doing. It's an old uh, Metasploit exploit that I would, uh, would have thought they would all get. But I talked about how easy it is to bypass uh, security controls. So all I need to do is if I password protect this file, and upload the same file to virus totals it's no longer um it, none of the av vendors know that it's bad and that you know it's it kind of concerning because this just has a microsoft uh, it's microsoft word document that is password protected by by the office encryption if you if you look at uh, some of the next generation vendors uh, and again, this is per virus total. So if, you know, there, there may be other technology that these next generation vendors are using that I'm missing, but I'm leveraging uh, virus total for my testing. And none of the uh, next generation vendors really even attempted to look at it because it was password protected, which really surprised me because if you take an open source tool like uh, uh, OLE, um, uh, uh, these OLE tools that are open source free on the uh, internet, uh, OLE VBA is one of them. I ran that same document against OLE VBA and the, um, the open source tool knew that this file was possibly malicious. So that, that was, you know, kind of concerning. Uh, and, the reason they're able to see this is the actual data is protected, uh, is encrypted inside Office documents, but it doesn't encrypt all of the metadata and all around it. And this open source tool was able to find it. Uh, the other thing that the threat actors are, are hiding is with steganography and content disarm and reconstruct zero, zero trust content security. Uh, does protect against steganography. So if you're not familiar with steganography, it's a trick uh, to uh, to add uh, text and um, uh, text data into a image and you can hide it and you can password protect it. So this image has actually has text in it, but you don't see it. It's all hidden in the um, uh, inside of the code and there's spaces in there that the threat actors can leverage to um, to add steganography. And then just to give you an example of of how a content disarm and construction reconstruction tool like Votero can can help. Uh, one of the newest zero days, uh, there's actually been a, quite a few since this, but one of them was this was back from Memorial Day weekend it's called Felina and uh, you know, there's a village in Italy, but it's also the name of this uh, zero day. And the the zero day 
is a attack against um, a tool inside of Microsoft Office or Microsoft Documents is Microsoft Support Diagnostic Tool. And by leveraging this uh, vulnerability, threat actors are able to weaponize office documents, uh, word and text documents that they will just by opening the file or by previewing the file, uh, if, if this uh, vulnerability has not been patched, it will, uh, it will can launch, um, a attack against those. And this is kind of some de more details on it. Uh, the uh, talks about if you want to read more up on it, there's uh, there's a lot of information on the uh, on the internet about it. So wanted to do just a quick demo of how a how Votero would protect against a zero day like uh, Felina. So John Hammond, uh, who is a security researcher, uh, uh, follow him online if you don't already. He he's has some really good information, and on his GitHub account, he actually created a proof of concept uh, Word document leveraging Felina so that he could show how how uh, dangerous this vulnerability is. So I'm going to show just a quick little video and show how Felina would uh, impact a system uh, that, you know, again, it could be using um, uh, AV vendors and all. If you obfuscated this file enough to get past the AV vendors, you can password protect it to get past AV vendors and, and other security controls. Uh, but if you if you were not blocking, you know, if your other tools were not blocking against it, then, or if it got past your other tools, uh, we'll show you how uh, Votero could sanitize uh, this file so that it would uh, uh, not cause any harm. Uh, and we're going to do that with a Votero Chromium plugin. So again, we talked about the fact that we we want to protect. Uh, files. We don't trust files coming in no matter where they come in from. So for this use case, for this quick demo, I'm going to leverage a, uh, a file that we're going to download from the internet. Okay, so what we have is over on the left-hand side, we have a Windows system that has not been patched for the Felina uh, vulnerability. On the right hand side, I've got a reverse shell running a Metasploit. So there's a reverse shell sitting here listening and it's waiting for this computer to be compromised and then uh, we'll, have, we'll have reverse uh, shell back into this uh, Windows box. So have, <clears throat> excuse me, basically have full control over it. So what I'm going to do is we have this document, and again, it, it came from the, the uh, GitHub uh, that I showed you a moment ago. So if I run the video, you will see that what we do is we're going to open that document. And first, we're starting over on the right-hand side, the listener for the reverse shell. So the listener is listening. We start the document, and the first thing it does is it detects a problem, and without even... An, uh, uh, enabling macros, it automatically kicks off and launches an external download of a um, of a um, uh, reverse shell tool, and at that point, the have full reverse shell of this system over on the right hand side. You can see that uh, I'm able to uh, uh, to uh, take uh, full control of the system. Uh, oops, sorry, jumped ahead a bit. So this time we're going to do the same thing, but when we download the file, you'll see on the bottom, Votera popped up and cleansed that file with the content disarm and reconstruction. And now when we open this file, we never get anything over on the right-hand side. Even enabling um, macros, still nothing happens. There's, there's never a reverse shell established. And now we'll, uh, we'll jump over to the Votero console. 
and you can see what we did to uh, protect against that. So if we look, we see that the one threat was there. We drill into it. There's that Felina document that we downloaded. And if you look, it tried to do an external run of the um, uh, to download that external file. And because that was not a known good behavior, when we rebuilt the file, we, we left behind the external run. And we also left behind um, one other portion of the threat. And <clears throat> excuse me. And we did this in 0.3 seconds. So a little less than a third of a second to sanitize that file. And that kind of um, is, is what I wanted to talk about and just wanted to see now if there's any questions uh, in the uh, chat. I see uh, someone is asking about XDR platforms are all reactive. No malware virus by signatures and known behavior. Yeah, I think it was more of a statement than a uh, than a question. But I agree. Uh, so Votera is not. We don't require any signatures. We're not. We don't have to constantly update anything. Uh, we we have we build processes around knowing what's known good, uh, and those those are those kind of things are updated uh, periodically as part of just a software update. But in general, there's no requirement for um, uh, for connectivity back to the internet. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of customers that use this type of technology where they uh, on prem where they man where the system may not even have a, uh, ability to upload or, or excuse me download from the internet. Excellent. I don't see any other questions. Lexi, do you have anything before we close out? Nope, I don't think we have any other questions for today. Um, thanks everyone so much for joining us. Please feel free to connect with myself or Henry on LinkedIn um, and chat with us if you have any further questions. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you on our next Botira Live. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>